This guy sucks. I watch him every day because he sucks. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And ooh, you know how we say we're always right on time? Yeah, especially today. That's because we're always right on time. Especially today. How was your weekend? Do you have a good one? Sage, I had a lovely weekend except that uh, I'm probably going to have to go into some sort of rehabilitation program because I finally played Bellatro. Have you played Bellatro? No. Ooh, don't do it. Don't do it. I Nobody don't know play about it. it. Nobody play it because I'll tell you what, I can't stop playing Bellatro. What's Bellatro? Bellatro is a game where uh, it, it looks like a poker, like betting sort of sort of game. It, which is not my thing at all. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I haven't played it for the weeks that it's been out. But it's this wild game where you have to score a certain number of chips based on the card value of a deck of playing cards. But you can get like jokers and power-ups and booster packs and collectibles and tarot cards. And they just throw all these weird cards into it that fundamentally change the value of everything. Uh-huh. And it turns it into like this wild roguelike where you are trying to get the highest number of chips in a run, and then every as you do so, and you do more things, you unlock cool new cards that you can then add in. Like, there are 150 jokers, and they all do something different. Wow. Like, one joker will make it so, like, every even-numbered card in your deck gives uh -huh. you a times four multiplier. One will make it so, like, one's a sacrificial knife that eats other jokers, but as it eats other jokers, your score gets higher. Okay. It is such a good game. I yeah, feed the knife. Jelly PB was there during my. I stopped playing Final Fantasy VII. Wow. I was supposed to stream it again, and yeah. I said no. All I play now is Bellatro. Interesting. So you so you've got a bit of a gambling problem now. Mm hmm. Okay. Card game based gambling problem. It's a great game. I think it's like it's like fifteen bucks, and it's on everything. Okay. Except for mobile, and when it's on mobile, we're all done. It's over. Oh yeah, it's over for all of us. Oh yeah, that's it's going to be the Card end. Card games time. on mobile in general have taken too many of my friends. Yeah, that sounds bad. And I like I kind of get into them and then I and then I dip out. Yeah, like you know I was playing Marvel Snap for a long time. Yeah, I uh, of course everybody's constantly in and out of Magic. Mm -hmm. I wish that was the real world that I was talking about. Yeah, that'd be nice. In oh my and out gosh, of Magic! I wish we were just like we were just in and out of Magic. You know how our magical powers are constantly yeah. rising and fading. Yeah, with the position of the planets. Yeah, and our and our collection of trinkets of power. Right, and our hopes and wonders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Bellatro, <laughs> I'm going to be playing for probably a little while. Okay, all right. I know that games like that aren't good for me because when I was a kid, my mom took me to Vegas and I was so aggressively fiending to do slot machines that she had to buy me a tiny one for mm -hmm. the hotel room. Yeah. So uh, I don't get into those sort of games. That's every time I play a mobile game and it's like a free to play mobile game and a yeah. slot machine pops up, I'm yeah. like, I know what you're doing. And, and it's working. And I'm gonna do it at least once. Yeah. And then I'm gonna feel bad about myself. Yeah. And then I'll stop playing a month from now because of sunk cost fallacy because I gave you money. Yeah. Hey, folks. We got a lot of news today. We got stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about that ARC animated series that got announced with genuinely the most stacked cast of all time, maybe? Yeah, it's it's a lot. That's what happens when, when mm -hmm. Vinny Diesel is into your game from Go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that'll uh, do it. We're also going to talk about a lot of uh, Gary Con news. Yeah, it's a little bit of D and D, uh, kind of like roadmappy stuff coming out from D and D for the fiftieth anniversary mm -hmm. at Gary Con this uh, past weekend. Uh, and then we also have uh, some movie news, and uh, we're going to kick it off today with probably some of this Dragon's Dogma stuff. But before we even kick that off, we want to kick off our Monday morning by saying hello, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hello, good morning today. How was your weekend, bud? I was telling Sage I had a really lovely weekend. I played some Betrayal, which is one of my favorite board games mm -hmm. of all time. And uh, it was really nice. We got to do the Werewolf expansion. I had a great Oh, great cool. Time. I haven't tried that oh, yet. Lovely. Yeah. 
Really yeah, nice. I haven't tried that one either. That sounds really fun. I I love Betrayal, but I haven't done the Werewolf yeah, expansion. It's good. I haven't done a good board game night in a while. Due need, for a good board game I'm night. I'm due for a good board game night. And it's yeah. always an excuse to get my uh, apartment into a livable state. The only one. It's it, the only let's excuse. Do it. The only excuse is when company is coming. Yep. That's the only and way. And what else would company come for? Not a board game night? Not a board game? What, what else would I host? What would I bring somebody into my living space for? My private space for me? Seems Other than odd. board games. Feels weird. Feels strange. Seems odd. But hey, also, before we get too into it, if you're watching later on YouTube, be sure to like the video. Thank you for being here. Yeah. We're glad that you're here. You've probably you've probably been here before. You know you like it. You know, hey, subscribe if you haven't already. Just subscribe. Yeah. Hit the hit that bell, fam. Nice, sick, nailed it. <laughs> YouTube so hard, dog. I YouTube so hard. Okay, let's start with the Dragon's Dogma stuff. Yeah. Let's do it now. So, obviously, everybody was so upset last week with Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma was getting review bombed. It was getting. Uh, it was, it was, people were heated. They brought the heat. And like- It was a little warm. As people who are not yet Dragon's Dogma players, mm -hmm. uh, except for the character creator. Yeah, right. Um, it was interesting because I feel like I saw people on both sides of it. I saw people really, really, really upset about microtransactions, which is a very valid reason to be really upset. And then I saw people in our community too that were playing that were like, guys, it's not as bad as they're making it seem. Yeah, I, I think what, what it came down to basically is there are certain things uh, in Dragon's Dogma that they have made microtransactions. One of them is uh, heavily connected to fast travel within right. the game. Which we talked about on Friday. Uh, and for a game, for a game like Dragon's Dogma, mm -hmm. that's about exploration, and that's about kind of like getting from here to there is just like a huge part of Dragon's yeah. Dogma. So uh, anything that allows people to pay a little extra to do that easier, people mm -hmm. were like, well, that's fundamentally changing the game. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, from what the community was saying, they were like, anything that you can buy, you can grind for mm -hmm. instead. But that's kind of like a little bit of a fallacy in video games because there is an expectation to keep up. Games come out so quickly, you yeah. know you're going to be done with the game a lot of the time by then. By the can time I grind you for get it? the thing. Can I grind for it as quickly as somebody can buy it? Right. And how, no. How quickly? Never. You know? And then you're so far behind, it's just really not like sustainable and keeping your interest in the game a lot of the time. Yeah. Um. So even if you can, it's like, it has to be pretty easy yeah. if someone can buy if somebody, it. Yeah, if somebody can buy it and I yeah. find one every 15 hours, you can't just tell me that I can play for everything that yeah, I can Yeah, like, well, you could, just, you could just earn it. You can just earn it. Uh, the other thing that people were having issues with mm -hmm. were, of course, we were, we were hearing about performance issues. Yeah. Dragon's Dogma tends to run at 60 frames a second on, on console and on, uh, you know, a pretty decent PC build. Uh, but there were some areas that had, like, some dips. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then people were uh, very, very cross- that it didn't support all the newest DLSS uh, yeah. bells and whistles for frame generation and all that stuff. Right. Because, you know, uh, people like that stuff when they buy a $1,000 video card. They like you what? to support it. Um, they want it to work on their hardware? Yeah. And then the other thing was uh, <laughs> keep, keep in mind that the RE engine that Capcom runs all their stuff on yeah. is an engine that they're constantly updating. That's the basis for most of their modern games at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And that stuff wasn't available when they started working on Dragon's Dogma. Right. So you can't expect every developer to keep up with everything. Yeah. How, uh, however, one of the other things that people were having a real problem with was that Dragon's Dogma is a single save game. And it is not just a single save game. It's one of those single save games where it's like, you're going to get to a certain area or you're going to die or something's going to go wrong. And the game is going to save right there. Uh-huh. Because that's the type of game it is. Yeah. People were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Number one, please don't do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind it because I just sort of think about video games that way. If a video game is designed around me only having one save because it's like, hey, something bad's going to happen to you, uh -huh. but that's okay because there are so many opportunities in the world to like get make that back up or change it or go in a new direction. And we're sort of trying to build a world this way. I'm cool with it. Hate it. Uh, but <laughs> the real reason for multiple saves in a game like Dragon's Dogma, what mm -hmm. if you want to make more than one character? Yeah. And they said, no, no, no. They have this incredible character builder. I mean, just like people have been in Baldur's Gate, like it would make so much sense. We had a ton of fun with the character. They literally put out the character builder yeah. on its own. Yeah. So like you would think they want people building a bunch of characters. Well, and it's also a game that's based on other people's characters can show up in your game and be like pawns for you. So it would be fun to have more characters from more people out running around. 
Uh, but you know, that's just a weird choice. It's a bit of a weird. It's like a choice. style choice I disagree with. You know, yeah. um, it's not like objectively wrong, but it isn't what I want. Yeah, I can. And listen, from a player style, uh huh, you can you can argue just about anything, right? right. Like, because I'm on the other side. Uh, from a game design standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, there was something that they wanted to do, but it may not have matched up with what the way the community feels the game should be played, mm -hmm. or what the community wants out of it. So, yeah. uh, here's what happened in order of operations. Number one, mods came out to change all that stuff. Number two, Capcom said they would fix that stuff eventually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Perfect order. <laughs> no notes. Uh, That's just the way it should go. So, That's just the way you should hope for your game. Exactly. So first of all, uh, a couple of mods came out. Uh, so basically, you know, Wake Stones, the Art of Metamorphosis, which allow you to change your character, and uh, things like Port Crystals, which are mm -hmm. for fast travel. That mm -hmm. stuff. Um, there are mods that have come out that basically one of them is called Crazy Shop by a modder called Crazy Potato. Okay. And basically cra Crazy Potato basically threw into the very first shop you pass in the game in Venworth. Uh-huh. Uh, that shop now sells Elite and Explorer's camping kits, which are what you need to- uh, Nice. To, to heal your character in the field. Okay. Uh, wake stones, rift crystals, port crystals, and fairy stones. Basically, it's everything you need to fast travel and uh, replenish your character in the Great. very first shop in the game. Great. Boom. Solved. Done. Done. Uh, it's been downloaded 35,000 times already on the PC, mm -hmm. uh, which is not which is not a huge number. No, that doesn't sound like a lot. But when you consider- But for a mod. When you consider for a mod on the PC. In this small amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. And a lot of people are playing on, uh, on console, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. Uh, the other one is called uh, Early and Cheap Art of Metamorphosis, mm -hmm. which also adds to the first shop you pass, uh, the ability to change your character appearance. Yeah. Because the ability to change your character appearance, and this is something that I do fundamentally disagree with in a lot of modern games. Yeah. I wanna change my character's face whenever I want. I wanna be able to change everything about my character. Yeah. If but I want to if if be tall now, yeah. I'm tall now. Like if I'm locked in a class that I chose because I'm leveling things up when I play games, absolutely that makes perfect sense to me. But I should be able to change everything that is simply aesthetic about my character at any given time. I want to be able to remold my face. I want to be yeah. able to change the like gender structure of it. Like none of that should be locked. That's super weird. It's yeah, a video game. It's a video game and my appearance has nothing to do with my progression in the game. Correct. So why make that the sort of thing that is mm -hmm. pricey and rare. Yes. So many indie games have made that possible where you can change your pronouns mid-game, mm -hmm. where you can change your appearance mid-game. Yeah. How am I feeling but today? But AAA games aren't doing it. How am I feeling today? What kind of character do I want to play today? Yeah. Why? And especially when you're not doing multiple saves. Yeah. Yo, just let me change my character. Yeah. Just let me do it. Uh, and then the other thing, that one's been downloaded 21,000 times. And then the uh, the third one mm -hmm. is uh, called the Dragon's Dogma 2 Save Manager. And that basically allows you to have uh, multiple save slots, uh, name your saves, have different characters going, have different games going at Yes, once. correct. Uh, now, in response to this, mm -hmm. uh, also there's a modder who has enabled the, uh, the hidden DLSS 3 implementation in Dragon's Dogma. Uh, they're working on DLSS 3 for the RE engine and for Dragon's Dogma, and it's mm -hmm. in there in the code. Yeah. It just hasn't been released yet, and some modder was like, nah, I'm gonna release it. <laughs> it's sort of like when Starfield came out and, and everybody was like, there's code in Starfield to let us run on every video card. Yeah. Can we just run on every video card? Uh, if I flip the switch, it just lets it happen? Can I just poke this button and then, whoops, I'm playing Star, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and I understand, you want, the ability to uh, to release the code to your to your uh, players when it's ready, when it's stable, when yeah. you properly tested it, and I get that. Right, because also, if you don't, people are going to complain. It's like if you don't have the feature, people are going to be upset, and if you release the feature too soon and the feature is, the feature is buggy, people are also going to be upset. Yeah, it's the Miyamoto thing, right? Yeah, uh, a broken, you know, a bad game is bad. Yeah. you know, forever. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean, my thought is always like, hey, what if you just waited to release games until they were done? Yeah. A late game is late, a bad game is bad. 
Yeah. You know, and late's not terrible. Right. Um, so all of these mods came out, but also Dragon's Dogma, the developers were uh, at uh, PAX, and they were chatting about it. Uh, they basically said that Capcom is going to boost the Art of Metamorphosis items available at Pawn Guilds to 99. So basically, like, every time the shop refills, you'll get 99 character yeah. character changes, which is good. Because if you're still making me pay, like, in-world money for the to change my character, like, at least give me an unlimited chance to Boo. do so. Boo. I don't think you should have to pay to change your appearance. I think buying little outfits, mm -hmm. hell yeah. I think paying because I want my, like, I don't know, nose to look different or yeah. my chin is weird. It's really weird. That's weird. It makes no sense. I it's always hated that about, like, Sea of Thieves, paying for those change, like, appearance potions pissed yeah. me off. I think in a free-to-play thing, yeah, it makes a little more sense because they're like, I mean, it's not good, but yeah. I understand the thinking mm -hmm. from a business standpoint where it's like, we're giving you the game for free. Yeah. What things are you interested in doing in the game where we can get like a buck or two off of you because we're giving you the game for free? Mm -hmm. Maybe Dragon's Dogma is $70. Yeah. $60. Let me yeah. let me just, you know, let me just change, sure. change my, change my, there's definitely, this is one of those things where publicly the devs have to cover for things that the business people made decisions on. Yeah. You know, no dev sat, no dev sits down. Right. No game designer sits down and goes, how can we make this game unpleasant? Mm -hmm. What little bit of unpleasantness can we add to this game? For sure. It seems cool right now. Can we make it a little more unpleasant? Yeah. As a game designer, I'm always interested in how to add hatred for a game. Yeah, to what my would game. make it a little less fun yeah. for players? Mm, that'd be great. Uh, the other thing that they're talking about is on consoles, they're going to add graphics and performance options, uh, including a toggle for motion blur and ray tracing. Uh, I think motion blur should be a toggle in every single game. Yeah. I hate motion blur in games. Yeah. I hate it. Mm -hmm. But I like the film grain when games add film grain. It depends on the game, but yeah. Yeah, I mostly do. Yeah. Because they both do the same thing. They make the game look a little less like... Artificial, yeah. They get rid of that too clean look. I agree, but I think the film grain does it in a nicer way. I prefer that as well. I Motion hate, blur doesn't do it for me either. I hate when I swing my camera; it's just like, yeah. Like why? Why? Why do it? I'm good. Um, they also said that they're going to uh, switch frame rate to either variable or a max of 30 FPS, which is huge because right now Dragon's Dogma always tries to run at 60. Yeah, and it's not the easiest game to run on the PC side. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were talking about how there's there's like the main big city that you run into and they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was running great. And then I went into this city and it ran at 15 frames a second. Time to kill some NPCs. Yeah. Time to murder some uh, artificial people. Right. In order to make my game run better. Uh, so they said, well, we're planning to release patches, including these updates and fixes in the future. And mm -hmm. we'll release them as soon as they are ready for distribution on each platform. Thank you for your patience and support. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 is the biggest launch for a single player Capcom game on Steam. Uh, they had over 200,000 concurrent players over the weekend, wow. which is huge yeah, for a single player Capcom game. Yeah. Uh, it's huge for any single player game on Steam. Right. Huh. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of people waiting for these fixes. How interesting. Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. Hey, speaking of dragons, how about the Dungeons and Dragons? Dogmas and Dragons? Close. Almost. Uh, Gary Con mm. was this past weekend. For those who are not familiar, Gary Con is usually a pretty small con that there isn't much to like discuss from. Usually yeah. it's more of like, I consider it almost like a community meetup con. You yes. know, it's not an announcements convention. Yes. It's where like, yeah, a bunch of our friends go and play D&D. &D, and yeah, that's it's, great. It's the old, it's like the old school convention. It's very old school, yeah. That, like people who have people who've made the D&D &D their life for most of their life yeah. go to Gary Con. Right, uh, put on by usually uh, like essentially in honor of Gary Gygax by mm -hmm. Luke Gygax's son. Uh, so they actually had a real presence for wizards this year at Gary Con, which is not real usually wizards? the case. Real wizards, real life wizards. You could only play as a wizard at Gary Con this year. It was oops all wizards. No, they had literal real wizards. They grabbed that one from New Zealand. <gasps> You know the New Zealand Wizard? I do. Yeah. Uh, so it's my not favorite hockey a team. A ton of stuff, but we do see uh, the cover for Vecna Eye of Ruin, which looks really, really great. Cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, 
this is a release date for uh, D&D Beyond on May 7th and retail on May 31st. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is an adventure that's set to take characters from level 10 to 20, okay. which is very, very fun. I love a good high level D&D. Yeah. Love, love, love. Uh, we saw like a little bit of things here and there, a little bit of talk about the video game side of things. As we know, uh, Larian will not be working on Baldur's Gate 4. Right. So basically all it is right now was like a, hey, just so you know, there's gonna be more D and D games. Yeah, I think even if Larian was working on Baldur's Gate Four, yeah. the announcement would probably be something like, "Hey, just remember how long it takes to make a Baldur's Gate. We'll right. see you in a decade." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably better for D and D games that I mean, it's not better because I would eventually want a Baldur's Gate Four. Sure, but it's nice to hear them say, "We're not banking on Baldur's Gate. We're not banking on Baldur's Gate. There's going to be a bunch of other things." People were concerned because previously Hasbro did have five D and D uh, video game titles that were supposed to be in development that were canceled. Uh, they say things are in the works, but we don't have really information as to yeah. what, just kind of like a, hey, it's gonna be okay. We know you loved this D&D video game and we, there will be more D&D video games for you mm -hmm. to love, basically. Uh, there was actually another thing on the book front, uh, an anthology book, Quests from the Infinite Staircase. Uh, this is republishing six classic adventures from previous editions, all updated for fifth edition. Oh, cool. Um, it's going to be released for early access on July 9th and retail on July 16th. Did they say what, did they say what comes with it? Uh, what, what adventures yeah. specifically? Uh, Justice, we love Justice in this house, mm -hmm. uh, said that um, Quest from the Infinite Staircase is unified by a theme of historical significance. He said, I wanted to select adventures that were memorable, beloved, and had a common theme to them. These include creative innovations for D&D, such as quests that subverted at hack and slash conventions, or D&D as a brand, such as adventures written by uh, Tracy and Laura Hickman. Cool. Classics. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, the revised adventures from Quest of the Infinite Staircase are... The Lost City mm -hmm. uh, from 1982, When a Star Falls, 1984, Pharaoh, 1982, Lost Caverns of, I'm gonna butcher this. Alex, do you know how to pronounce this? Is that Sajkanth? I think it's So Sokanth. So Sokanth. So uh, from 1982 and uh, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Dude, from these are all from 76 to 82. Yeah. 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 That's, that's wild. Yeah. Dude, really? It, that's wild. It's wild whenever they do something that like, concretely reminds you how long D&D has been around. Yeah, right? Like you you have it in your head. You're like, oh yeah, D&D yeah. &D is this is this many old. Yeah. And then you're like, we're going to republish this adventure from 1976 and right. you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck, that's crazy. It's like uh when I got the Art Narcana, yeah. and it came with the original module in it yeah. and it was printed in the style of the original module where it was like typed on a typewriter. Oh yeah, I've got Art like, Narcana, of course. Yeah, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I forgot." Yeah. I forgot. I, I was talking to a locksmith this morning, story for another time, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like, what kind of what kind of stuff? And I was like, uh, have, you, have you heard of Dungeons and Dragons? Like, what do we do? And he was like, yeah, I've heard of it, I've heard of it. I have a suggestion for your channel. You guys should do something like old school. And I was like, you mean like Dungeons and Dragons? It's been yeah, around yeah, since yeah. the 70s. And he was like, oh. Wow. Okay. And I was like, yeah, thanks. For the Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> Try yeah. something old school. Yeah, okay. Good hey, good idea. Uh we will do Try that. spinning. That's a neat trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just so funny. Uh there was a little <laughs> bit of just insights right now on the updated on the revised core rule book. Um, of course, we've known that slowly these things are rolling out bit by bit. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to see. I don't think that we have any formal dates from this. They just say that they're revisiting the core three rule books, which mm. we know. Yeah, we do yeah. have formal dates. There are dates on okay. here. Uh, PHB, September 17th. Uh, DMG, Dungeon Master's Guide, November 12th. And Monster Manual, February 18th, 2025. Dang. Yeah. It's all coming. It's all really happening. Yeah. Uh, each one will be available for early access on D&D Beyond a few weeks earlier than those release dates. Uh, they clarified that the new revised core rule book officially um, are not burning down the game, but taking books that are in many people's first steps into worlds of imagination and making them more accessible, easier to reference, and the content easier to find to be more useful at the game table, which I love. Very for it. Absolutely in. Uh, Burn I've, it down. No. Burn it all no, down. No, 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 no. Burn, kick it to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's so funny. Um, Destroy it. Yeah. It's cool that they were, that they made some of these, uh, they made some of these announcements at Gary Con. I like that. Yeah, I think it's really neat. It's hey, nice. A lot of our friends were there doing cool stuff. Did you see that? Uh, did you see that uh, one of the wizards that was there was uh, Abria Iyengar? 
was literally, have you seen this? Have you seen this artwork? Bring up this artwork, Alex. Go ahead and bring it up. That's just a Bria Iyengar. A Bria even tweeted it out. She was like, um. That's so funny. <laughs> um, Alex, can you uh, can you put it into big mode so, <laughs> Zoom so, enhance. so uh, Sage can see it? I can look at it on Twitter. It's yeah. okay. Uh, big mode. No, no, no. Take off the uh, the studio mode so we can see it. Ah. Put it into big mode for Sage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. That's it. That's Abri great. was like, there's me. I love it. There's me from Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> love it. Looks great. Uh, all very cool. Excited to see it. Um, it's been... It's, yeah, it's been very, yes, beyond uh, the 50th anniversary is cool and fun. It's exciting to see some stuff come out for it. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, it's neat. I'm into I it. I love it. I'm curious to see what happens next for video games. I really am. Like, Me Baldur's too. Gate 3 is carving such a path for like people want this, people that are not DD players are playing this. Like, it crossed. It, it, it crossed the like lines, you know oh. what I mean? Where you're like, ooh, is this for video game people or D&D people? And the answer was yes. It couldn't. I have friends that were D&D yeah. people that don't typically play video games playing Baldur's Gate. I have friends that are not D&D players and are video game players playing it. Like Nobody saw how big Baldur's Gate was mm -hmm. coming. Nobody saw it coming. Yeah. Like they were like, this will be pretty big. Yeah. Uh, no, it was like the biggest PC game of all time. Yeah. Uh, so that's wild. And it is why like, mm -hmm. It's a bit wild to be the studio that has to come up with the thing that follows up Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Because you have to go in knowing, mm -hmm. like Wizards has to go in knowing, the whatever studio they go with has to go in knowing. Yeah. You can't do another Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. Like you can't. You can't follow up the biggest PC no, game of all that time. that should not come next. Yeah, you're just gonna have to like, you're gonna have to like temper those expectations. Yeah because there's no way to follow that up. I think that it just needs to be a totally different genre of game. I think that's one of those things that like, when I'm trying to get friends into tabletop gaming, one of the things that I always say is like, I get you're picturing Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I know you're picturing us all sitting down at the table with elf ears, but I promise whatever you're into, it can be played like that. Yeah. That's the point of this, right? And only like three of us are gonna wear elf ears. Exactly. It's like, not everybody wears not elf everybody, ears. There's, not everybody's gonna be an elf. No. Anthony's gonna be a bird. Yeah, I'm gonna be a bird. Obviously. And I will be wearing feathers. <laughs> right. But like any genre of things that you're into, any genre of movies that you mm -hmm. enjoy, these games can be catered to playing in. And obviously the Forgotten Realms has like a world that it is set in that is more traditionally fantasy. Yeah. But I do think there's so many different genres of games that people play in those worlds that the video games are so easy to reflect that, that it's like, we just can't see another Baldur's Gate we need to not even get close to another Baldur's Gate because Baldur's Gate 3 is so perfect. It <clears> needs <throat> to be like just a totally different type of games. Hey. Uh, and there's so many options I'm so excited for. Might I suggest a spell jammer? A spell jammer game would be fun just as hell. Just one spell jammer. A spell jammer game? Just okay, one spell hear me jammer. Out. Make what Starfield was supposed to be. Thank you. It's just Starfield, but cool. Yeah. Spell jammer. Yeah. Come on, one spell jammer. Space pirates, my friend. Oh my God. Yeah. And the thing about that is you can get, you can get everybody behind that. Yeah. Even tabletop when people are like, I don't know, I'm like, can I interest you in being basically a, a bit of a Star War or a Doctor Who? Yeah. Can I interest you in being a space pirate? Yeah. A Captain Harlock, if you will. Imagine saying no to that. Imagine saying no to being a space pirate. I could Imagine never. Imagine you show up to Gary Khan and they tell you you can't come in because you're not a real wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Turned away. That's the way it was this year. Yeah. That's the way it was. Spell, uh, uh, space pirate landed right outside. <laughs> right outside the hotel. Walked up and said, I am here from a far off land in the yeah. vast reaches of, of the stars. Yeah. yeah, but are you a wizard? In a manner of speaking, the the spell, the ship is sort of magically. Yeah. Yeah. This might be a spicy thing to say, yeah. but that is what all of the like <laughs> fictionalized, overblown, we hate D&D headlines sound like to me. Yeah. Like that's how I read all of them. <laughs> Gary Khan says you can't come to Gary Khan unless you're a wizard. Like Gary that's how all of these headlines that people write about D&D read to Gary me. Gary Khan says that you haven't found the five <laughs> yeah. ancient pieces of the- <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> like all of the like drumming up like another controversy for Hasbro's Dungeons and Dragons. Gary Khan permits a, a, a discrimination by only allowing wizards at Gary Khan. Like, get out of here. 
Get out of here. Listen, I'm not trying to minimize anybody's feelings, but here's what I'll minimize. A lot of the controversies everywhere online, but especially in tabletop yeah. gaming. Look, look, we could do, I could talk for hours about how currently maybe one of the most um, sought after and profitable positions in tabletop gaming to have is hating tabletop gaming, but that's how you know a fandom's that made right it. Now, but we're that's, not gonna. That's how you know a fandom has made it. When there's a cottage industry about yeah. hating it. Yeah. When there's a cottage industry that's like, and listen, I've seen it in a lot of communities. Yeah. I've been there. Oh yeah. I've been there. And it's just like, hey, did you know that this thing that we all think is good is bad? Right. <laughs> and it's bad for reasons. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh shit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Or they're like, this guy sucks. I watch him every day because he sucks. <laughs> He's wrong and he yeah. sucks. And I watch him every day and I comment and I talk to him online more than my friends because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the sheer amount of like YouTube channels that are dedicated to that. Yeah. And it's just like about Critical Role or D&D &D as a whole. Millions of us hate this person and we watch him every day and tell him so he knows. Yeah, and I say wearing a t-shirt for it. Yeah, <laughs> he'll, he'll know that we hate him as we pay his bills. Right. When I was unboxing the merch that I purchased about this channel, I discovered a new thing to hate about this channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. One of my favorites is uh, <laughs> is D and D and tabletop right now. Uh huh. Tabletop right now has hit that um, that crucial crucial turning point of like indie music, indie mm -hmm. movies, uh, indie video games. Yeah. Where it's like there's a plethora of amazing things to do. Yeah. And everyone's using them to gatekeep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Everyone's, well, you everyone's know what it like, is? hey, have you heard of this game that, yeah. that was made by one guy that right. only 17 people have played? Yeah. And if not, why do you not like this hobby? Right. Why hey, don't you like hey. this hobby? Yeah. Well, it's because you know what's so interesting is like, I think this happens a lot for like for us as the girls, gays, and theys. Um, it's that like, oh, we were gate kept out of something. And then it's like, okay, well, if you like the main one, it's the, I'm not like other girls of tabletop games. Bully, you know bully what I mean? people. Where it's like, we got kept out of this thing and it's like yeah. giving someone a hard time for liking Taylor Swift. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Bullied it's people okay. can grow up yeah. to be some of the worst bullies. Right. Because it is a, it is a thing that has been so ingrained in them. Yeah. Uh, and they become so protective of their safe place yes. that then they bully people out of it. It's, yeah. it's a cycle that I've seen way too many times. Right. And it's such a bummer. It is. It's a huge bummer. <laughs> just under a D&D fan edition. Yeah. It is. It's just one of those things where it's like, it it goes full circle where it's like, we weren't allowed to play D&D. &D. We were told it wasn't, you know, for us, right? We were gate kept out of D&D. &D. And now we're on the other side of it of being like, <laughs> Oh, you play the one everybody knows about? Interesting. I play this one that was written by hand on a piece of paper that I found at a local record shop under a seat. Yeah. Weird. Mm. It's I personally thought that their album was very uh was very uh, d d just uh the same as an album that I heard mm -hmm. 17 years ago yeah. in a garage right. cuz I was there first. Yeah. I had it on a mini disc. Yeah. What? Get out of here. Uh, I will agree with Britt JK in the uh -huh. live studio audience who does say, how dare you like D20 and Critical Role? You need to be into failed save. And that's true. Yeah. That's actually true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the only gatekeeping we'll allow. Rosa said, um, uh, or oh, oh, Zora, there we go, I can read. Said, oh, you're a D&D &D fan? Name five dungeons. Name six adventures from the infinite staircase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're a true fan. Yeah, it's this just, is so weird. This is a reminder. People are, are going to be new to communities, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're going to get things wrong, and sometimes they're not going to know stuff. And, and they're and, allowed to just enjoy things. Yeah, and you're you can you can help them without uh, being corrective, reductive, or yeah. gatekeepy. Right. 
Uh, and sometimes people will bring new perspectives to things or different perspectives. And also as a reminder too, that like you as viewers have so much power in like what succeeds in uh, any kind of content creation. Uh, and as we see the industry going through this little bit of a phase where uh, hate content and like drama content and like, you know, stirring up the, I think Jelly PB said it best of like, you're not gonna believe what they did now kind of content. There is a level where we as people who are really, really like socially active, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know our community in particular is so socially active and caring and I love, uh, and then there is a level where we activate that and then we put it at everything. And now we're only supporting the content that is tearing something down, yeah. right? So like making sure that we're still creating space for there to be viable careers in tabletop gaming that is loving something and supporting something and enjoying something and making sure that like it is easy to get riled up and like it is an effective emotion for people to like activate within yes. us to hate something. And that makes so much sense. And then we can rally together around that. And that can be mistaken for community. Yeah. Like I a shared like, hatred can be mistaken for like companionship and community. I feel like people need to just uh, keep in mind that uh, there are there are extremes on either side of mm -hmm. any spectrum. Yeah. And to be careful of sliding into one of those things, I see it a lot mm -hmm. in, in communities, like you're yeah. saying, where it's like, it starts off as a good campaign or a good social movement yeah. to do something good within a community. And then they just get so, they get so used to the fight mm -hmm. or so used to that being what they do. Mm -hmm that they begin to like, it, the perspective gets warped. Yeah. And you just gotta be careful because it can happen to you slowly over time. Absolutely, and it's just a reminder to be like loud about things that you love too. I just love it, yeah. Name seven dragons, you absolute fool. Right. Tiamat, Goldschlager, mm -hmm. Diablo Canyon. Nice. <laughs> Diablo Cody. All right. Those are two different dragons. Yes, they're, keep going. They're two different dragons, they're yeah. siblings. Yeah, Cody. Figment. And Zach. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Figment, the dragon of imagination, uh -huh. the purple dragon of imagination. Mm -hmm. um, and. What's the dragon from Shrek's name? Oh, oh no. Name five Shreks. Oh no. There are only four yeah, Shreks. Yeah, Puff the magic dragon. Puff. Yeah, Puff. Don't forget Puff. There we go. Dragons. That's it. That's it. Dragons. Uh, Alex in the chat was talking. Yeah. Timberland, the forest dragon. There you go. I forgot. Uh, Alex in the chat was talking about the D&D Converse. They're doing a bunch of collabs that they announced also. Uh, there is the D&D Lego stuff that they announced, mm -hmm. which looks really fucking cool. Uh, there was the D&D yeah. Converse collab. The D&D Lego is amazing. Everybody's got to have a Converse collab. Yeah. Converse collabs, and I haven't seen this D&D one. I'm excited to take a look at it. Converse collabs can go either way. They really can. They really can. They are wildly inconsistent. Yeah. It's not like a it's not like a Nike collab where you're just like, oh, they're just gonna do like a really cool colorway. Yeah. And they already have like a good silhouette and design. Right. No, sometimes the uh, the Converse can come out and you go, huh. I like the ones with just the like orangey red stitching and the amber sand. Oh, stupid pop up. I like those ones. Yeah, okay, those are good. I think those ones are neat. But although I will say this, from a distance, uh -huh. from a distance, yeah. that design can look a little Ed Hardy. Okay, I can see that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I like this one with like the um, map tiles. Yes. I think that's kind of neat. I think that's really sweet and that's cute. That's really dope. Uh, and then on the other side of it, it has like the the dragon logo. I think that's kind of cute. Not spots. Yeah, that's good. That's not spots. Not pit. Not not. I can't get show. over these shorts. What are these shorts? Oh my god, that's so funny. What? Can we? Can oh I get God. a? Can I get a big mode on that, Alex? Big mode. That's from Converse as well. That's so funny. What? Those are the funniest shorts I've ever seen in my fucking I life. I actually love those. See, here's the thing. I've I go all the way they've around. They've come around. Yeah, they've come around. Like there are a lot of stores that you and I order yeah. from that do like purposely, purposely ugly, low poly yeah, like, retro here's the thing. stuff. Those are hideous. They're hideous, but they're I like dope. It. That's dope. <laughs> They're hideous. I love it. And you know that those are like track shorts too. Yeah, like they're they made are. of like weird track. Those are absolutely athletic shorts. I am so excited for those. Oh my God, that's so funny. Uh, there's a, a shirt with a dragon on it that says where there's fire, there's treasure. And then it has the different polyhedral down the side. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Yeah. There's some cool stuff. There's Not some just good the shoes. stuff. I was just picturing shoes. And now seeing the clothes, there's some pretty cool stuff. That's neat. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. There's the, some. 
I want the kids ones. Oh, always. Always. Are these kids ones? They look like kids ones. They have a big strap over the front. They look like they've got to be baby sizes for babies, and I can't tell. No, are they? No, those are those <laughs> are grown. Those are groans. Okay. Those are groans. All right. Neat. Um, yeah, this stuff looks good. This that's, stuff looks good. Yeah, that's that. They did they did ugly in the right way. Um on those on those. Yeah, I agree. Do you do you know what do you know what shoes? From Converse, I really liked recently. What? This is a complete diversion. All right. But um, let me see if I can get Google to bring A diversion. Up. He's distracting us from something. That's right. Wizards only, a diversion. Oh, no. Only wizards in the room. Uh, they released these, and I was going to send them to you, uh, and I forgot, but these are like, oh, my God, enough uh -huh. of the pop-ups. These are like low-poly Converse. Enough of the pop-ups, man. These are like low-poly Converse in real life. Yeah. Those are fucking They're like neat. angular, Those low are weird as hell and actually really neat. You look like a PS2 character wearing Converse. Shit, I am into that. And I want it so badly. Damn. I want them so bad. All right. Yeah, that's actually really cool. How much are those? Were they like They're designery prices? Yeah. Because yeah. like, I want to say the standard for Converse is like, what, 70 bucks? I want to say like, if you, yeah, 70 sounds right. 70 sounds right. And if Converse aren't regularly 70 bucks, if they're more than that, no. Take it down, Converse. Sh settle down. Settle down. Settle the fuck down. Only wizards in the building, Converse. <laughs> wow. 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 Uh, let's talk about another piece of big news that had uh, people talking. Big mood. Big mood. Big mode. Big news. Nice. See, what happened is I, I was trying to say big news. Yeah. And I actually big mood like a cow. <laughs> and I tried to cover it up, and I think I did it. <laughs> really smooth. I think I did it smoothly. Really smooth. Smooth. <laughs> hey, that's not Thanks. a wizard. That's a cow. <laughs> Get him. Get him. He can't come into Gary Khan. <laughs> uh, Ark, I just felt, I don't know, my brain went Ark. dragons, dinosaurs. Yeah. Kind of the same thing in my brain. Dungeons uh, and dragons and Cadillacs and dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dungeons and diners and drive-ins and... Dragons. And dragons and dives. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, ARC animated series had already been announced, but the cast that has been announced for this ARC animated series, I genuinely kind of thought was a joke at first because it's just like a little too stacked. It's like not in a bad way. Like this is a this is an incredible no. cast. It just seems impossible. It seems impossible. So this is based on the dinosaur survival game ARC. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Now, we did talk about how uh, a little while back, v Vinny D, yeah. the Diesel himself, yeah. showed up in ARC and was just like all about ARC. Uh -huh. And we know he's a video game guy. Sure, yeah. We know that we know that's where he comes from. Yeah. Uh, but with the power of Vin Diesel, yeah. ARC has also grabbed a, a wild cast. And okay. at first I was like, Maybe Vin Diesel just grabbed a bunch of his friends. Yeah. But this list does not read like people who hang with Vinny D. I don't think Vin Diesel has friends. That's my hot take. Hot take. It's I think a cold it, take. Dude sucks. Uh, it's but a moving lukewarm on. take at best. Yeah. It's pretty cold. Um, so let's talk about this lineup. Okay. Michelle Yeoh. Boom. Michelle Yeoh. Boom. Oh my God. Russell right. Crowe. Russell Crowe. They're not all going to rhyme. Ger Gerard Butler. The also Russell Crowe. Yeah. I don't know why, but sure. if, you, if you tell me that Gerard Butler is uh -huh. in something, I could just as easily picture Russell Crowe. That's fair. They kind of just yeah. morphed together. I feel like Russell Crowe got a little older yeah. and was like, I'm not going to, like, I don't want to be in Hollywood shape anymore. That's mm -hmm. a pain in the ass and I'm Russell Crowe. Yeah. And so they were like, get us a Russell Crowe. And that's when Gerard Butler showed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get us a Russell Crowe type. We need a Russell Crowe stat. Yeah. Uh, the love of my life, David Tennant. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, one of my faves, Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright, unbelievable. Yeah. Elliot Page, also another one of fave. My faves. Uh, Madeline Madden, and of course, Vinny D. I, I need everyone to stop saying, and best of all, Vin Diesel. Hey, PC Gamer, settle down. Yeah, PC Gamer, get, I'm going to enhance on this. This is PC Gamer said right there, right there, best of all, Vin Diesel. Yeah. That's a take. That's, hey, 
You remember how we were talking about people hate farming and throwing yeah. things into the, I think yeah. PC Gamer might have thrown this in to get people to comment. You think so? I think this might be a little, uh, this might be one of those engagement traps. You think? Yeah. I think people just genuinely actually like have this weird thing for Vin Diesel. But Alex, will you show them the link I just put in really quick? You ever watch that reality show, The Engagement Trap? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it had Lindsay Lohan in it. Yeah, that's all, yeah. yeah Lindsay yeah. Lohan's the host of The Engagement Trap, yeah. the reality show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was just so interesting because I was like, oh yeah, they have this thing where like Vin Diesel, they think is everybody's favorite, right? And even then we like made the comment, did that not give you the correct link? Uh, uh, we made the comment that was like, I don't think Vin Diesel has friends. People in chat are like, hey, I'd be Vin Diesel's friend. And it's so weird because I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if we zoom in on that headline, I wouldn't. We did personally. discuss uh, a little just, while ago uh, the- these Just throwing it out there that I wouldn't. Sexual assault lawsuits that- uh, have come out recently, which I will say, uh -huh. we and we talked about this at the time, Yeah, they did such a good job of keeping yeah. a lid on. That's what I'm saying. I just think, I think with, we have to do this more often, where if somebody has been accused, especially in, in, the, in the court by multiple women of assault, I just think every time their name comes up, somebody should mention it. Yeah, just feels weird. Every time their name comes up, we should go, hey, wasn't there a bunch of lawsuits for... For sexual assault? When they're, uh... Vin Diesel is not a sweetheart. He was accused of assault. Oh my God, I can't believe you saw the headline and then said that. You are bad. Yeah, and hey, just so you know, everybody who, who was like, I'd be Vin Diesel's friend. You're not bad. We're not trapped, this was not, a this was no. not a trap for you. This no. was not the engagement trap for you. No, but- We don't know that you knew but that. But Netherworld Ned turned it into one. The world Ned made his own trap. No, but that's we what showed the headline, and then he said, "Net Vin Diesel's a sweetheart." Well, you made your own trap. It wasn't a trap, but now <laughs> you walked right out and said, "I think I would like to show you this, though. Yeah. I think I think you should know this about me." Look, and hey, I don't. Uh, now we know. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard of this, and I love Pitch Black. That's yeah. fine. Right. Right. Like. Right. Pitch Black. I, I am also, I was also a fan of the Riddick, the Riddick verse. Yeah. But you know. You're a big Fast and the Furious fan. I'm a Fast and the Furious, I'm a fast, I like to go fast and I'm a bit furious. Yeah. At times. Yeah. The bear trap was closed and you opened it up and climbed in, mate. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, the, moving on. The animated series was announced alongside Arc 2 yeah. in 2020. Now Arc 2 is the one that that has, that stars Vin Diesel. Yeah. Um. And that's the uh, that's the sequel. That's it's expected out later this year. We're gonna see Arc Two, mm -hmm. um, and so you know they uh, this is coming very soon. Along with that, now the animated series. Mm -hmm. When I saw this trailer, yeah, uh, I will see. Now these are three dudes that I believe are hang out and are friends. I don't like it. This is <laughs> that's a red show, flag for me. If you show this opening to this trailer, yeah, uh, here's what I believe. Yeah, I believe that these three dudes. You can show it, Alex. Uh, I believe that these three dudes uh, are definitely friends. Yeah. From executive producer Gerard Butler, Russell Crowe, Vin Diesel. Mm -hmm. Those guys hang. Yeah. Those guys hang out. And you should be a little worried about it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, um, yeah. The I animated series, we will say, does not follow the Vin Diesel character as the main mm -hmm. character. Yeah. Uh, and I was surprised that it was traditional 2D animation for some reason. For some it reason, it looks really beautiful. It looks really good. For some reason, I expected yeah. it to to be like a like a 3D, yeah, or at least like a 2D 3D heavy hybrid, yeah. But this looks like really traditional animation. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks good. You know, I think this is a, a good natural transition to something that I wanted to talk about that I saw on TikTok because we were talking about how like, oh hey, you know, if you bring up somebody's name and they have these sort of allegations against them, maybe mm -hmm. you should also bring up things about them. Sure. Um, I remember when you said that. Yeah, so there is a there is a TikTok that I got and I was like debating whether or not we should, uh, I should like repost this because mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a spicy take. Let's watch it together. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm just, I wanna get everybody's thoughts on it. This isn't a, hey, this is right or wrong, but I wanna get everybody's yeah. thoughts on what this um, woman is saying. Alex, I'm gonna bring it up on minds just so we can hear where we're at in it. Yeah, just so we know. All right, and just make sure there is audio for it because it is currently muted on Anthony's laptop. Anthony's, there we go. One up, yeah. Okay, here we go. People are so weird about cancel culture because I think we should start making it worse. Um, I think we should make it borderline impossible 
to be a celebrity, to be paid for that kind of work, to be idolized, to be, um, to be kind of given a massive platform in order to get that status in society. I believe we should make it honestly insufferable. I think we should hold them to a standard that is beyond even like, um, normal, uh, living human beings. Because if you want to be idolized then you better act like an idol, if you want millions of people to watch and take your advice, then you better be a shaman. Like I need you to be educated. I need you to read stuff. I need, if you yeah, I yeah. get this. So I, I think this is a good take. I think this is a very interesting take. And it's like, you know, yeah. Can we do the same for politicians? Absolutely. I think politicians should not be treated like celebrities. I think the celebrity that we give to politicians is super weird. Other countries don't do that. Uh, other people treat politicians like civil servants because that's what they are. Uh, they are people that work for you as the public of the place that you live uh, and not celebrities and deities like we have created in America. That's like a very um, weird American thing. Yes. And like a, like a Western society thing. Yeah. Um, other places really don't do that. Um I think I think that uh, I think that traditionally you're correct. I think uh, in the latter half of the of the 20th century and into today, like yeah. a, a lot, most like big societies and cult, like most big cultures, yeah. do have like their pop idols, their yeah. movie stars, their their music stars, things like that. Uh, and we do we do just allow these people to be mm -hmm. like the biggest things and the most, and we yeah. don't we do not ask even the smallest, even for the smallest bit of, of dignity or intelligence or right. we ask for nothing. We of ask them. nothing of them. And it's so interesting because like, if we didn't live in the type of society that did literally worship celebrity, that would be a different thing where it's like, okay, there is a world where we don't have to ask that of everybody who makes art, but celebrity is such a different thing than art. Yes. Celebrity is a whole different part of this. And if you ask to have that sort of influence, over people and that yeah. position of idolization, why is there no expectation of you to do good with it, right? Yeah. Like, why do we not uphold any sort of standard for even decency? Like, this person on TikTok says, like, they should be a, a shaman. They should be educated. They should yeah. have all these things. I, I think that's really interesting, and I agree with that. We don't even ask people to not be violent criminals yeah. to be celebrities. Nobody <laughs> should have enough enough power, money, authority, privilege right. to escape uh, to escape. Yeah. Uh, crimes to escape putting people into danger to yeah. escape uh, uh, to escape spreading things that uh, that mm -hmm. put people in danger. Yeah, misinformation. Like the the wild thing is this: we yeah. as we have we have grown up in a generation where a post fairness doctrine, which mm -hmm. was a big rule in the media. Uh, until Ronald Reagan. Oh, shocking! It's Ronald Reagan's fault. Destroyed uh, the fairness doctrine. Uh, and we basically broke down uh, monopoly laws that we took such a long time to build up. Yeah. Um, we are so used to uh, there being limited repercussions for uh -huh. people spreading dangerous myths information, yeah. for people hiding information, yeah. uh, for people, uh, and the ability to, to hide horrible things that people do. Right. All of this stuff has just grown and grown and grown. Yeah. Uh, and it's gross. And it's like, I think our expectations are just so weird and low and we have that like, oh, well, they didn't mean to be this. They just, you know, like they don't have to be this. They didn't mean to raise your kids or whatever. And there is a level of that with like just somebody, again, somebody who makes art, somebody mm -hmm. who is a creator. But the level of celebrity where these people are paid millions and millions and millions of dollars and have access to millions and millions and millions of people is a totally different level. This yeah. isn't everybody who makes videos on the internet. Right. This isn't everybody who's in a movie or on a TV show. This is about people who are paid millions of dollars and are not expected to go through any sort of even like public media training other than making themselves look good. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, if that was the trade-off of like, okay, I don't agree with anybody making excessive wealth personally. But like when we talk about these people that have access to this excessive wealth and power, why is there not any expectation of them to be above and beyond people? Right. And when you look at things, uh, when you look at things like, you know, somebody brought up the clash of just capitalism in general with yeah. this, right? Uh, you can talk about things like the Ezra Miller, mm -hmm. like the Ezra Miller thing where it's just like, hey, this person, they are, they are literally breaking and entering and doing like yeah. horrible things. Uh, what is happening Mm -hmm. Why is 
Warner Brothers trying to cover that up yeah. and release this movie right. so hard. Yes. Especially when Coyote versus Acme exists and it's done, it's on a shelf. <laughs> sure. But, you know, there is a need mm -hmm. for a company that needs to make a billion dollars. Yeah. Right? A billion dollars off of a film. Right. They need to. Uh, so they're like, well, for a billion dollars, mm -hmm. we'll minimize the fact that, that, that this person's a, a predator and a criminal. Right. For a, for a billion dollars? Yeah. You take... We can split one Fast and Furious movie into two different parts, which is wild mm -hmm. because nothing happens in a Fast and Furious yeah. movie. I say this as yeah. somebody who loves the Fast and the Furious. Right. It's not like much happens. Yeah. There's not enough going on in a Fast and Furious no. movie where you need to split it up into two. Sure. Car go fast. Yeah. Sometimes people punch car. That's the Furious. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes cars swing from Vine. Yeah. Not two movies. Not two movies. That's one movie. Um, Sarah brought up a very good point and said, I would say that that could be how cults start, but to be honest, celebrities who are not that level of great have already successfully started cults. So yeah, I mean, A, we have all of Scientology. Right. Uh, B, we have people like Jared Leto, right? Uh, Jared Leto Island, where people go to Jared Leto Island. <laughs> yeah, to join Jared Leto's island on his cult. Uh, so it is one of those things. That guy hates valid it if too, you say that he has like, small hands in public. Yeah. He hates that. Good. Everybody should do things Jared Leto hates. I don't have a problem with people that have small hands. No. Your I have hand, a problem with Jared Leto. I have a problem with Jared Leto, and he mm -hmm. has a problem with his small hands. Yeah. It's weird. Sure. Um, I do think it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, well, maybe the problem at the end of the day is the existence of celebrity in itself. Maybe there is no actually ethical way to engage in celebrity, right? I'm fine with that. Let's remove celebrity. Yeah. I'm fine with it. I'm also <laughs> fine with that. And like, there will always be figures and there will always be idols and that exists in every way. But those idols and figures have not always been people that acted in movie you like right. or people that made song you like um, because nothing about them, nothing about those two facts enter any qualifications of celebrity. And there are no qualifications, right? There should yeah. be qualifications you must maintain to have that level of power, money, and access. And oftentimes that, oftentimes that qualification mm -hmm. is just, um, is just some talent yeah. and willingness to go along mm -hmm. with, with what a lot of horrible business people that, yeah. man, that like, that right. manage who you are, yeah. say yes to. Obviously, at the end of the day, everything for me comes back to, if there wasn't money, this wouldn't be as much of a problem. Yes. Uh, because obviously it is a, a highly, highly profitable thing to have celebrity, right? Influence and money is what comes with it. And that does attract really horrible people. And if it wasn't something where people were making art with the intention of celebrity power, influence, and money, mm -hmm. um, then it would attract less horrible people looking to use that in a negative way. Yeah. It would attract people who are qualified in that they want to make the thing and not in that they want to, you know, one have the, the money, yeah. right? One of the things that you see so much here in in LA where we are or mm -hmm. in New York or in any of these capitals of, of sort of creative industry is you meet a lot of people who were doing the thing and then stop doing the thing because mm -hmm. it's just like, I just couldn't work with another asshole. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. Well, I, I had to get out of it because I just couldn't work with another asshole because there is somebody mm -hmm. brought up politics in this as well. Yeah. And obviously somebody, you know, somebody else brought up like just capitalism and business and industry. Yeah. The people like there are industries that attract people who want a certain amount of notoriety, mm -hmm. fame, power, yeah. money. And in doing so, people who cannot handle being around that level of like uh, – terrible and vile yeah. and like unethical practices yeah. often leave it. So it's a thing that we've gotten into with the American political system where like people who are good people don't survive the American political system in climbing the ranks into any positions of power. Yeah. It's uh it's an it's an interesting problem. I like I yeah. like this TikTok because to me this is an obvious statement. Mm -hmm. To me this is like why don't we make it harder for people to be celebrities? Yeah. And also Here's the other thing. A lot of people uh, mm -hmm. responded to that with sort of like, we should just make it harder for celebrities to talk in public. Yeah. And what I will tell you is, uh, as somebody who straddled the world before and after the internet, mm -hmm. uh, 
I am glad the idiots out themselves now. Oh yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> the industry was only a more dangerous place before we knew that there were predators. The problem is now that we haven't adjusted ourselves as like the receiving audience to do something about the information that we right. get. So like we're getting the information where it's like, hey, you shouldn't support this insert person here because they are a dangerous person, right? right. Not a not a anything else, but a literal danger, right? Uh, and then we still have not adjusted enough as like a culture to be like, okay, and we all agree that's bad. And it doesn't mean if you like that song so much, you right. should just keep listening to it. Well, that's the, like, oh, but yeah. I just loved Chris Brown. So sure. now I have to continue, Listen, even somebody, though I know. As somebody who in 2011 or 2012 would have told you that one of their top three artists of all time was Kanye West. Yeah. I can tell you it's pretty easy to to cut this stuff out of your life if you want to. Yeah. But also, here's what I can tell you. There is a counter argument to this that mm -hmm. we've heard a lot of times, which yeah. is, hey, yes, there is a star and the star power mm -hmm. makes this happen, yeah. but these are collaborative industries. Mm -hmm. And here's where it gets messy, and here's yeah. where it gets messy for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Do I not support the latest movie with X, Y, or Z person, or a video game that I know was made by X, Y, or Z person, yeah. when I also know that video games are made by 500 to 1,000 people, mm -hmm. or I know that a movie is made by a couple hundred yes. people. How do we navigate mm -hmm. that? And, and that is something where I think there are a lot of personal lines that get drawn. Yep. Uh, I'm one of those people where it's like, I understand what you're saying, Yeah. but if there is a person that I know is terrible that is in a key powerful position within Correct. a project, yes. that's when I go, uh-oh, I don't do this anymore. Yes. I also grew up in a heavily, like in a Jewish American uh, immigrant house where uh, we, we were Holocaust survivors and all this stuff. I don't watch Woody Allen anymore. And that was right. a big deal for, yes. for my family. Look, in 2011, if you had asked me, I would have said one of my favorite artists was Marilyn Manson. Sure. So, you know, But then you things. found out the thing about the removing of the rib. That was it. That was the thing. That was the thing. And not the uh, the horrible uh, essay. Yeah, not stuff. all of the crimes. Yeah. Uh, but besides <laughs> that, it is it is interesting. And I think there are uh, there's not one line. There's mm -hmm. a lot of lines that have to be, that take a lot of nuance. Uh, and people don't love to, to have to take a lot of nuance. Yeah. But when you look at a project, you get to figure out where your line is for each thing and what, what your best harm reduction can be. Right. Like I think everybody who wants to do good is just trying to navigate what is the most harm reductive. Um, and positions of power are very important. The severity of crimes are incredibly important in what these people did. Yeah. Uh, it's important not to blanket it all together as like that person said something I don't like or that person committed a crime yes. or is a violent or dangerous person or whatever those things are. And, you know, words can also be a, a horrible thing that people have done. But in addition to that, too, it's like what you have that is the most valuable in capitalism is where you spend your money. Yep. So when somebody continues to, uh, when a company, because most of the time it's not actually like an individual, it's a company that's made something, a company has continued to enable and support and fund the projects of whoever this terrible person is that is making the art that you liked, or this, there's this whole team, yeah. but they have continued to employ this person the most power that you can possibly have in the way that our system exists right now is how you spend your money. Yeah. And it is the only way, and though there are people that will suffer potentially by your boycott or your avoidance of that thing or you spending your money elsewhere that didn't commit the crimes, uh, there has to be a like greater good of communicating to the companies yeah. that they cannot continue. That is the only yeah. way, because the companies don't give a shit. We're never going to like get them to morally agree with us mm -hmm. because they're not people. Right? right, companies aren't people. Legally, Be they are. Unfortunately, in America, <laughs> legally they're treated as people. But like, even the the C suite executives, yeah, these aren't even people. You know what I mean? Like, these are not people. Yeah. These are walking, breathing, so, line go and, up executives. Yeah. And so the other thing that I that I would add to that is a lot of these things that people want to boycott. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're like, well, you know, it's it's there are a bunch of people that work on yeah. whatever franchise it yeah. is. Yeah, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. All of those gigantic franchises are yeah. owned by incredibly huge companies that yes. own gigantic portfolios of other franchises, and yeah. one of them becomes less profitable. Yeah. They just focus on one of the other ones. Yeah. These companies don't usually get hurt by it, no. but you can train them through mm -hmm. positive reinforcement. Because here's the thing, there's no way to train them through rec through negative reinforcement. Right. It's like training a puppy. I mean, the negative reinforcement is them not making your money. Well, but, but, that's, but this is what I'm getting to they're still making your money. Mm -hmm. If you say, I don't watch Harry Potter yeah. because of J.K. Rowling, mm -hmm. 
Warner Brothers has got you one way or the other. Sure. You know what I mean? So if you put your money into one of the things that Warner Brothers, that you like that Warner Brothers does, yeah. like you can boycott Warner Brothers as a whole, and I yeah. think that's awesome. And mm -hmm. if you want to do it, do it. Yeah. Um, but if you just go, well, I'm not spending money on that thing. Yeah. I'm going to spend money on this. Yeah. That tells them when they mm -hmm. sit in the boardroom, mm -hmm. oh, this is not popular. This is, yeah. we'll put more into this. We'll right. stop making this. I can also say as somebody who has worked at terrible companies that I knew were terrible while I was working there because yeah. we all have to have jobs uh, and most companies are terrible, unfortunately. Um, as somebody who has worked at those terrible companies, the people who were holding those companies accountable were not hurting me. I was being hurt by that company, yeah. right? So like in most of those situations, the good people within a very toxic structure are already being harmed by the company. Yeah. They're and looking to find their way out. They want to <laughs> yeah. find something better. They wish the company was better. Right. And like holding them accountable has always been a positive to me when working in those spaces. Yeah. Um, but I think it's interesting because I, I guess I the reason I put this in here, because obviously people know our opinions on like cancel culture, right? Yeah. On the idea of like the concept yeah, of cancel. You know my opinion. Fucking wizards only, bro. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Fucking wizards only if you're coming to Gary Con. Right. <laughs> but they know that we are like. I am incredibly pro the concept of deplatforming. Mm -hmm. I am incredibly pro the concept of if you compromise the chance that you were given at influence, it should be taken from you, right? Nobody is entitled to celebrity yeah. or influence. And the fact that you got that in the first place was a fluke. Yeah. You don't get to keep trying. And going back to something that mm -hmm. somebody said earlier before yeah. we um, kicked them out. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is no such thing as... Um, there is no such thing as punching down with these companies do, or no. these or these celebrities. Yeah. Do not let these celebrities make you think that you are punching down yeah. when you are trying to hold them accountable. Yeah. Oh no, I may never make a billion dollars a year again. Right. Well, you there, made a billion dollars a year before? Yeah. Well, then you're good, dog. You're good. You're good, dog. There, Wizards only. There is no punching down at celebrities, but there is punching the celebrity men that committed violent assaults. But that's... That's a story for another day. But what he I was, said, closing the infinite staircase. <laughs> right. Book. But what I was going to say <laughs> is, um, the reason I thought this was interesting too is because she didn't just talk about being like a decent person too. Mm -hmm. It was talking about like having a, a decent education and like a basis of like information too. And I just kind of wanted to like play with the idea of like in your utopian version of celebrity still exists, mm -hmm. but what are the qualifications for a celebrity? Like what qualifications should somebody have to meet to have celebrity status? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I I think that comes along with, mm -hmm. that comes along with some guidelines for the audience as well, because mm -hmm. this, this is stuff that I wish overall for all of culture yeah. and all of society, right? Which is, right. and somebody mentioned mm -hmm. it earlier, um, there's a slight discomfort that comes with having to be cognizant and thinking all the time. Oh yeah. There's a slight discomfort that comes with uh, making a more slightly moral decision or a smarter decision yeah. all the time when it's easier to go like, eh, it is what it is. Yes. If everybody was a little more mm -hmm. cognizant yeah. and focused and present, mm -hmm. uh, including and especially celebrities, and we're mm -hmm. like, hey, before yeah. I share this out, even though I, even though I, really, really think it. Yeah. Should I look into it? Should I learn about it? Right. It's just one of those things where it's like, though basic decency is like, should be for every kind of job. If we think of it as like, okay, well, you have to be really tuned in and aware while you're at your job. If you're mm -hmm. a manager of communications for a large company, when you send out communications, you have to be really committed to doing so. If mm -hmm. you are an HR manager, you have to know about HR. If you are a technician on any kind, you have to know about that device. So this is just talking about those qualifications. Every job has qualifications to meet and skill sets to have. So celebrity right now is just like, the performance of it all, but there are others, right? Mm -hmm. So like if I'm applying for somebody who works in a, you know, who builds airplane parts, yeah. like I not only have to know how to build that part, but there is like an education background that I should have sure. about the general thing, right? So this isn't actually like a crazy big ask. So we're this saying- This is asking them to meet the qualifications like every other job has to. So we're saying, Vin Diesel, you've got your driver's license. <laughs> now get your celebrity license because it's wizards only. That didn't make any sense. It's wizards only, baby, yeah, right. is what we're saying. Right. Hey. So, well, I wanted, I wanted yeah. to like- See if we could do like an exercise like that of everybody like adding a qualification. Like sure. You could add one thing that a celebrity has to know about yeah. or be able to do in order to achieve the status of a celebrity. What would that be? Sure. Right? Yeah. 
let us know. Definitely tell yeah. us. We would love I to hear it. I think that like a uh, like a, a world event political knowledge mm -hmm. should be mandatory for a status of sure. celebrity. I think that you should have to be somebody who has like a constantly updating like conscious knowledge of world world news and politics. Yeah, absolutely. I think you should have a knowledge of I think you should have a knowledge of the world around you before mm -hmm. you talk about it. I think you should have a knowledge of the greater industry, yeah, which a lot of people don't, which yeah. leads to people being uh, uh, in insensitive mm -hmm. towards people who work other jobs in the industry that they don't understand. Yeah, um, like that can be a qualification too. It's like you have to have worked a normal fucking job. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that. Those kind of things can also be those qualifications. Yeah. And when I say like a knowledge of the world, I don't even mean you have to speak on politics. I mean before you make choices, you have to just be fucking aware. Yeah. You know what I mean? Before you speak about anything, you just need to know what the fuck is going on. I mean, there's some there's some slippery slope stuff mm -hmm. of like of like uh, requiring a certain certain education or or, or standpoints yeah. or whatever, obviously. Right. But, you know, in a perfect utopian world where this was done well, yeah. obviously we'd love to see stuff like that. Alex, do you have anything you'd like to add to the celebrity qualifications list? I will say that the support we give to celebrities mm -hmm. is very significant to me as well. And I struggle very often um, in a space where influence and social capital seems to be part of qualifying you for other professional jobs. Yeah. That I often find the people I respect the most are the ones who are invisible in their industry. And like, I don't know, I, I yeah. have been doing a lot of personal thinking about how yeah. I yeah. operate in an industry where my face is attached to something. Yeah. And so – yeah. Um, Thinking about celebrities who don't have their face attached to things mm -hmm. but are still using a platform mm has -hmm. been something I've been brewing on recently. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to know all of your answers. I would be curious. Like, if what would the, the job application look like when it listed all of the mandatory qualifications to be a decent celebrity? Yeah. And again, this isn't a world where we can just, like, eliminate celebrity. This is, hypothetically, if we were to try and find a way to have celebrity, which I think would probably be the best just not to. I'm just curious what that would look like. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know whether you, if you're watching here live or mm -hmm. on YouTube, either way, in YouTube, you can leave a comment. Or if you're watching live or on YouTube, you can yeah. join the Discord. And that's a great thing to do anyway. Yeah. It's free. It's cool. And it's where people suggest things that they want to hear us talk about. It can be news stories that are going on, but it can also just be discussions like this. I love having these. These are one of my favorite things for us to do on the show is just to like discuss and get all of your opinions. Uh, and I already see some really interesting stuff in there of like, empathy and just like emotional training. Like mm -hmm. maybe there is some sort of stuff like, I think it's great. So we're going to go through all of those um, uh, in the comments, in the discord, and and uh, you can suggest more things like that in the future. We're going to go through and we're going to thank everyone that supported us in one of the many ways that you can do so. One of those is going to patreon.com slash pixel circus. If you want to check out the Patreon, you get a bonus clip from this show every single week and a bunch of other awesome content. There's so much stuff going on on the Patreon lately and you should definitely check it out. That's right. You can also subscribe on YouTube. That really helps. Give a thumbs up, give a like, give a smash that bell fan. Yeah, uh, all those we words. love that. Uh, you, and also, we love it when you share stories mm -hmm. or when you share that we're going live on social media, on Twitter, on yeah. wherever you happen to be these days. Yeah, we really appreciate it because we are a small company and mm -hmm. a small channel, and word of mouth really helps us a lot. Yeah, Anthony, when you're not here, where are you? <sighs> not a Gary Con. Because he's Cause not I'm, a wizard. Because I'm not a wizard. I'm a monk. <laughs> I'm an Aarakocra monk, and I, yeah. they won't let me into GaryCon. But you can find me everywhere online at A Carboni. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me on Twitch at Anthony Carboni. We're going to be playing some Final Fantasy VII today. And, uh, of course, my science comedy podcast with Jeff Kanata, We Have Concerns. Uh, that comes out uh, every Monday. So there will be a new episode today at wehaveconcerns.com. Nice. You can find me on the internet everywhere at Not Sage. I stream on my channel Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, Alex, how about you? You can find me on the internet on Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy and also on Instagram where I'm at my full name, Alex Teplitz. We got locked out of the studio this morning. If we're just you, lucky we're here. If you <laughs> did something today and it didn't say it, just uh, just comment on the video, I'm a wizard and I demand respect. Yeah, there we and go. And then we'll know. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We love you. We think that you're awesome and we appreciate you spending your morning with us. And uh, there will not be a show on Friday. Mm -mm. So we'll see you next week. Bye, BBs. Bye.